Hello again, this is Mark Barabas, your data protection pal, and here are the fortnightly updates and news about data protection and cybersecurity. And this is despite the general elections in Singapore. So let's see what's interesting this week. And I assure you, there are quite a few big ones, and this is probably one of the ones that catches my eye, and I wonder whether you are aware about it. Uh, not sure if you know about this app called TikTok. If you don't, probably your kids do. It's one of the more well-liked and popular uh, video sharing app that has uh, been owned and bought by China Bike Dance recently. And there are some engineers that have taken this app apart and figured that there were some privacy issues with the Apple users. And in fact, in India, they actually even... Uh, wanted to remove TikTok from the App Store. I wonder what's going to happen in Singapore and other parts of the world. But well, TikTok is now responding and we'll see in the upcoming weeks as to how this develops. But whatever apps you're using, be very careful uh, of the privacy uh, concerns with regards to how the app is collecting and even sending out your data. So other news. Now, this is where uh, an article is there on Harvard Business Review, uh, especially for businesses, because during this time of COVID-19, um, many companies have not spent time to update their privacy policies to keep up with the times, because most companies now are working from home, and in fact, many schools are, are even uh, learning from home. So... This is a good time now, if you're stuck at home and stuck, in the, stuck not working, not at home, but not in the office, it's a good time to look at your privacy policy, especially with regards to digital uh, policies, use of cloud, devices, uh, networks, VPN, these are all part of the policies uh, regards to digital security and it's very important because you don't, the last thing you want is to have a, a hacker go into some innocent worker's computer and make its way into your network and attacking your crown jewels, now that's bad news. So companies do be very careful and you must want to look into this right now. And back home in Singapore, um, another major data leak where more than 3,000 people had their data, oh, it's more than 3,000 Singaporeans had their data leaked online. And apparently this is related to some Bitcoin scam. In fact, I think I received the, a message as well with regards to this. And maybe my data has been leaked as well. I don't know and I hope not. But whatever case, this is a lesson to all people. Be very careful how you give or what data you give to companies, even online. And uh, guilty as charged. I gave out a lot of data online and just got very careful the emails you receive, the messages you receive, whether it's text, WhatsApp, Viber, or even uh, WeChat. Be very careful what you click because it could be a malicious site. It could be a, a, a person doing phishing. And I am no stranger to phishing calls. In fact, I had a recording of an entire phishing call, which I will post one day. I, I will, I will. Now this is uh, again back at home in Singapore, uh, 2nd July 20th, 20, 2020, uh, PDPC, the, commission, the Personal Data Protection Commission, uh, sent out an email to companies reminding them to register their protect, data protection officer. Now uh, if you didn't already know, if you go to acra.gov.sg, acra.gov.sg, the site that gives about uh, that you do company reporting, AGMs, you, when you search for any company data, you will find information about any company, including your company. And previously, people would search for ACRA website to find out details about the company, whether they've done the AGM, whether they've done their financial declaration. Now, from April onwards, we have noticed a new line on the ACRA website. Don't believe me? Go check it out now. It's a third, there's a third line apart from AGMs, financial information. The third line is information about data protection officer. So I believe this exercise is there to collect information about the DPO and upload it to ACRA. Now I got a, a little bit of a um, idea as to why they're doing this because 
uh, with regards to any data protection concerns, any individual or company could write in to the DPO directly instead of complaining to PDPC directly. I mean, uh, poor guys in PDPC, you can really, really respect them for coming out of the policies and if everyone's going to complain about some itsy bitsy matter, they're going to be really, really busy. So I guess this is a good way for companies to then uh, address data protection concerns and that's why companies should or must uh, take effort to be PDPA compliant. So during this time of general elections, uh, make good decisions, choose wisely and also not only choose your candidates wisely but be very careful as to what you are clicking online because like I said, many of our personal data has been stolen, been shared and it's gone all over the place and the last thing you want to fall is to fall into a scam and you know during the circuit breaker many scammers attempt to use the police, the, the banks or even legitimate companies to scam people so be very careful how what, what, you, what you click on so do not be a victim of cyber criminals be aware of the general election team phishing emails invites or even spoofed websites so be very careful to, click, to check the website before you really click on it so do not click on any uh, unknown emails links from people you do not know and for all official news refer to the government websites or the official websites so be very careful and vote wisely in this upcoming general elections. So my name is Mark Barabas and on 8th of July, I'm doing a conversation with Mr. Eugene Tan who will be asking me questions about data protection. You are most welcome to attend. So this is Mark, your data protection pal, and I hope to see you again real soon. And I hope you find these fortnightly updates really useful. So have a good week and see you again really soon. Goodbye.